this is my car. And inside this envelope is a picture of my car on my brand new toll ticket. Now you may be wondering, how did I get this toll ticket? Well, I made the same mistake everyone else makes. I think it knows where it is going. This is the the lake. machine knows. This is the lake. Stop yelling at me. No, it's not Stop yelling. yelling. That's right. I followed my GPS. Actually, even worse, I followed Apple Maps. Good hand motors, I don't have an intro. Now the ticket isn't as much as I thought it would be, only about $25, but it's still enough money to be a slap on the wrist. So I got to thinking, what things could I give up to pay for it? Well, I didn't want to sell any of my Bionicles or cancel my subscription to Zoo Books, so I kept thinking, and thinking, and thinking. But then it hit me. What if driving was the problem and the solution? In other words, if I drove more economically, how long would it take me to pay that $25 back? If you read the title of this video, you might be asking yourself what hypermiling is. So let's get it out of the way. What is hypermiling? Hypermiling basically boils down to making changes to your driving habits and sometimes modifying your car in order to get the best fuel economy possible. Now there are some uh, less legal and dangerously stupid things that people suggest to hypermile, but I'm going to stick with the safe and legal stuff. In this video, I'll fill up my car with gas three times. On the first tank, I'll use fairly simple fuel saving tactics and then use progressively more complex ones on the second and third tanks. After each tank, we'll tally up the miles per gallon and see how much my fuel economy has improved and how much money I've saved. But first, as with any experiment, we need to talk about the variables, starting with my commute. I drive to work four to five days a week, about 30 highway miles round trip, and I also generally go to get food every day, usually about 10 city miles round trip. Now the miles I put on each tank won't be exactly the same, but my driving habits are fairly predictable, so close enough. I also will be filling up at the same gas station at the same pump for each tank. Before I started hypermiling, I got an average of 26.1 mpg over the last 10 tanks. So remember that number, 26.1 mpg to start. And of course, there's the car. It's a 2005 Pontiac Vibe with an automatic transmission and 275,000 miles. Think of it as a Toyota Corolla, because it basically is one. I've made a video on that here. There's nothing special about my car, really, and that's a big point of this video, to see how much you can save in an average car. Okay, so time for the first tank. We're going to start off by focusing mostly on driving habits. I made sure to accelerate very slowly and keep my speed under 65 at all times. Don't use cruise control to do this, though. Cruise control has a tendency to upshift uphills and slow you down downhill, neither of which saves you fuel. Keeping a lower speed and accelerating very slowly is a huge benefit to your fuel economy. As the hypermilers say, the number one thing you can do to help your fuel economy is to adjust the nut behind the wheel. But it doesn't stop there. I also try to use my brakes as little as possible. As much as people say hypermiling is about driving slowly, it's more about keeping your momentum going. So I took turns fast and kept my momentum going in between stoplights. For example, let's say I was approaching a stoplight at 40 miles an hour. Instead of keeping at 40 miles an hour and coming to a stop quickly before the light, I would coast down to about 20 and see if I could roll through the light once it turned green. Sometimes I could, sometimes I couldn't, but the fewer times you completely stop, the better. Probably the most extreme thing I did on this first tank was to turn my car off and let it roll in the parking spots. As long as I was lined up with the spot, I would turn the car off and let its momentum carry me the rest of the way. It's also worth noting that I didn't let my engine warm up before setting off either. I would make sure my seatbelt, music, and GPS were all set, then I would crank the key. Think about it, you're getting zero MPG while you're idling. So how did I do? Well, on my first fill up, I averaged 30.6 MPG, a whopping 4.5 MPG better than my average. If you do the math, I saved $5.77 over my average fill up. Not bad for my first try, but I figured I'd give it another go. So along with those other tactics, I started the second tank off by adding an MPG meter. It's just a $20 wireless code reader that connects to an iPhone app. This really helped me become more efficient because I could see what kind of fuel economy I was getting in real time. Now you might be asking, why spend $20 to make $25 back? I'm going to answer that question in the form of a web page. www.amazon.com slash returns. Anyways, I also started driving behind tractor trailers in order to lower my wind resistance. Now of course, don't follow at an illegal distance, but these trucks push quite a bit of air out of your way even from a safe distance. This is called drafting. For those of you who like NASCAR, this is your chance to say that you drive like a NASCAR driver. This is probably your only chance in this video, but you're welcome. And speaking of air, I also used my AC less. When I needed AC, I turned it on full blast, and when I started to feel cold, I switched it off. 
I did do this experiment in the summer though, so I definitely didn't do this as much as I could have. So how did it go? Well, on my second Philip Phillips, I averaged 32.1 mpg, only 1.5 mpg better than my last tank, but a whole 6 mpg better than my average. If you add it all up, I saved $7.87 over my average tank. Now we're getting somewhere. On to the last tank. In addition to those other tactics, I started off the third tank by removing some weight from my car. I usually keep a toolbox, vacuum, and tire inflator in the back of my car, and I removed all of those which reduced my car's weight by 45.8 pounds. Not much, but it's something. Next, I inflated my tires to 45 psi. The reason for this is rolling resistance. If the tire is more inflated, it's harder, so it's easier for the car to push it over the road. Now, some people do suggest that you fill up your tires to 60 psi, but in my opinion, that's a bit unsafe because you get less grip in the process. I also made a more conscious effort to... Oh, oh, hold on. What's up? Oh, the mic still works from farther away? Oh, cool. I also made a more conscious effort to park further away in parking lots. When you spend time work looking for the perfect parking spot, you lose more fuel in the process. So I picked the first spot I could and walked instead. So how did I do? Well, my last tank came out too, drum roll please. Hey, hey, drum roll please. Thank you. 33.2 mpg. Only 1.1 mpg better than my last tank, but a whopping 7.1 mpg better than my average. If you add it all up, I saved $9.92 over my average fill up. Almost 10 bucks. So, was it worth it? Well, let's dig into the pros and cons. First, the pros. Take a look at my car. Wow. Does it look fun to you? It's big, it's slow, and it's not even a manual. There is honestly nothing I can do to make this car fun to drive. But hypermiling was the most fun I've ever had in this car. Watching the MPG gauge and trying to keep my fuel gauge as high as possible was like playing a video game. A weird, slow video game for, for nerds. Hypermiling made me a lot safer of a driver as well because it made me slow down and pay a lot more attention to my surroundings. You have to keep your momentum going so you're always planning for the next turn or stoplight. Things were a lot more peaceful on the highway as well. I'm usually zooming by in the left lane so slowing down and letting everyone else pass me by was a nice change of pace. And our final pro of hypermiling is, of course, money. I basically got 50 to 80 free miles out of each tank. I drive about 14,000 miles a year, around the national average, and so hypermiling regularly would save me anywhere from $15 to $30 a month. That's almost a phone bill or, you guessed it, a toll ticket. That's right, I saved almost enough to pay that sneaky little toll ticket, $23.56 over a month's time. Not bad for mostly just driving like a grandpa. However, hypermiling has its downsides too. I'll start with one I didn't really think of beforehand. People don't really want to ride with you when you're hypermiling. Think about it. You have to take turns quick, but drive slower, and it takes you longer to get where you're going. This is especially true if you're not using your AC. Now you may be fine with these things as a driver, but they can be a bit rough on your passengers. It can also be much harder to just relax behind the wheel, and I had to get used to thinking about driving constantly. I do think you can get used to it though. But overall, I'd say hypermiling is worth it to me. I think I'll do it every now and then because it truly is pretty rewarding. But is it worth it to you? I'll leave that choice in your hands. Well, mostly in your feet, really. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing if you like this video. Happy hypermiling! Oh. Well, <laughs> alright.